In this video, I want to talk about confidence intervals. And there's three questions that I want to answer in this video. It's um, just kind of an introduction to confidence intervals. So those three questions are these. Why do we use confidence intervals? What is the, what's their purpose? Uh, the second question I want to answer is, what is a confidence interval? What is it made up of in general? And then finally, how do we write a confidence interval? So let's start off with our first question. Why do we use confidence intervals? Well, let's go with this just as basic example. Let's say I, I really like fantasy football, so I'm interested in how many touchdowns a quarterback will throw in a week. So, so what's the average number of passing touchdowns thrown by quarterbacks in the NFL each week? Now, I could just give you an educated guess. Um, so I just could give an educated guess and maybe say, you know, I I would say on average there's about one and a half touchdowns thrown per quarterback per week. That's the way that we could say it. Um, now I could be a little bit more specific and I could actually find the average or the mean for a number of different weeks and I may find that the average is a little bit more specific and it becomes 1.75. So this is just an educated guess. This is an average for a particular week or maybe even for a season. I could collect a whole season and find the average. And both of these would be okay. They would answer this question. But in statistics, we, we hardly ever deal in absolutes. And so we want to generalize things because we always want to be on the safe side. In statistics, we almost always want to err on the side of being safe. And in order to be safe to make an estimate of something like this, we use something called a confidence interval. Uh, I didn't spell that very well, but a confidence interval. Let me just highlight it up here at the top. It'll be neater. And what a confidence interval is, is it takes an estimate of some kind, and then it adds a little bit to both sides. Okay, It takes some kind of estimate, and it adds and subtracts, because not every quarterback is going to throw 1.75 touchdowns. There's going to be some quarterbacks like Aaron Rodgers or Drew Brees that throw a bunch more uh, touchdowns, and, they, and they're going to be on the high side. And then there's going to be some quarterbacks that maybe are rookie quarterbacks or quarterbacks that aren't as good or on as good of teams and they're going to throw fewer touchdowns so to be on the safe side i'm going to give an interval so if i were to say something like uh, i think a court i think the average number is between maybe i say it's between two uh, let's change that it's between one and three touchdowns so this is this is an interval that allows me to be a little bit more safe with my answer so that's why we need confidence intervals they are a way to be a little bit safer with these estimates that we can make when we find the average or a proportion or something like that so what is a confidence interval? What is it made up of? That's the second question I want to answer. Well, it's made up of this. The first thing you need is something called a point estimate. And a point estimate could be a number of different things depending on what your data is. It could be a mean or an average. It could be a proportion. It could be the difference between two means. It could be the difference between two proportions. Okay, there's a lot of different things that we can use as our estimate. But these, all of these, will come from a sample of some kind. So we're going to find a sample mean or a sample proportion or the difference of two sample means or the difference of two sample proportions. But that is the point estimate. Lots of times I tell my students just, to, just in general that it's just an estimate of some kind. And that's what I was talking about before right here. This average is an estimate. Well, I then take that estimate and I add and subtract something called a margin of error. And I'm not going to get into the specifics of the margin of error too much in this video because there are a number of different 
margin of error formulas depending on which one we're looking at if we're trying to find a confidence interval for means my margin of error is going to be a, the way that I find my margin of error is going to be a little bit different than finding the margin of error for a proportion or the margin of error for a difference of means or the difference of proportions or any other type of confidence interval that we're looking for but a confidence interval will always be some kind of estimate and then plus or minus the margin of error. And again, the margin of error will change depending on what type of sample you have collected. Like these are my samples over here. The way that I find this margin of error, the formula for that will change. Okay, but just remember that a confidence interval starts with an estimate and then you add and subtract this margin of error. And that gives you your interval. Okay, remember I said that if I were, on this example, if I were to say between 1 and 3, that's my interval. So that's what we are creating when we use, when we create a confidence interval. Now, when we find the confidence interval, whatever it may be, there are three parts to it. You know, how do we write a confidence interval? There are three things that should be a part of your answer when you're talking about a confidence interval. The first thing that you need to have is the interval itself. Okay? The second thing that needs to be as a, par a part of your answer is the confidence level. Now, you may not know what this confidence level is yet, but it's usually 95%, 90%, maybe 85% or 99%. But this basically, this confidence level is how much confidence we are putting in our numbers. That's what it, that's what it basically means. And then finally, um, the third part is the context. If I'm going to talk about the number of touchdowns a quarter, that quarterbacks throw, I need, to write, I need to write about the quarterbacks in my answer. So let me give you an example. This is an example of a confidence interval. We are 95% confident that the mean number of touchdowns throw by, thrown by NFL quarterbacks in a week is between 1.25 and 2.72 touchdowns. So do we have everything that we need? I hope we do. The interval is right here between 1.25 and 2.72. There's the interval. Well, what about the confidence level? Yep, I've got that as well. The confidence level, level is right here. I am 95% confident. And again, this confidence level could be 99, 95, 90. It could be anything. Once we get into some, spe some specific examples, you'll see where this comes from. And then finally, do I have the context of the problem? Well, sure I do. When I say the mean number of touchdowns thrown by quarterbacks, in a week. This part of the sentence is the context of my confidence interval. The interval is just the numbers. Most of you that are watching this video are not, if you just have the numbers, that's not going to be enough. You need to write the confidence interval with these three parts, the interval itself, the confidence level, and you need to provide context to your answer. So that's just an, ex that's just an introduction to what, why do we use confidence intervals, what are they, and how would we write them. And some of my videos after this one, you'll see how we can, or you'll see some specific examples of how to work with confidence intervals.